Welcome to Circuit Secrets. In today's video, we're going to take another step towards a CB radio VFO. In the past few videos on I2C, we have gotten the display in the SI5351 working. In this video, we're going to add inputs for channel selection and transmit. We're also going to incorporate multi-core programming for performance and add frequency offsets for mixing the VFO signal with other local oscillators. We are still using the same wiring as the signal generator, but now we have added three buttons for testing. In the final version, we will replace the transmit button with an optocoupler connected to the transmit switch of a radio. In its current state, the VFO has a standard offset of 10.240 MHz for mixing with a local oscillator on transmit, and additional 455 kHz offset on the receive. The channel selector buttons are working, but calibration and offsets are hard-coded into the sketch. Let's step through the code in its current state. First, we call in the libraries for the I2C, the display, and the clock generator. Next, we set the I2C address of the display. Now we create a display object. Next, we create an unsigned long long to hold the frequency of the VFO. Now we set the offsets for transmit and receive. These are set because most radios use multiple local oscillators and mix the frequencies to generate the desired output. This keeps the oscillators from being on the desired frequency and eliminates interference. Next, we come to the variable used for channel control latching. We do this to prevent one push of a button from causing the channel to switch multiple times. Next, we create an instance of SI5351. This is used to access the clock generator. For more details about the clock generator and display, see my videos on I2C. Next, we come to a variable to hold the channel selection information. Now we come to the splash screen bitmap data. Finally, we come to setup. Setup is the first function. Here is a block diagram showing all the functions. The functions are setup, setup1, loop, loop1, draw logo, display channel and frequency, TX and RX. Setup is used to configure the display and clock generator. Setup 1 is used to configure the input pins. This spreads the load between both cores. Core 0 handles the display and clock generator, while Core 1 handles user input. This simplifies the code and allows us fast input response without the need for interrupts. Loop calculates the current frequency, handles the display, and the clock generator. Loop 1 handles all of the user input. The function draw logo displays the splash screen. The function display channel and frequency associates the frequency for display and VFO with a channel number. The functions TX and RX set the frequency of the clock generator based on the selected frequency and the offset information. In the setup function, first we set the pins for I2C. Next we initialize the display. Then we clear the display and generate the splash screen. We delay for 3 seconds and then initialize the clock generator. In setup 1, we set the pins up for the channel selector buttons and the push to talk transmit switch. We set the pins to use built-in pull-up resistors. In loop, we first come to the call to display channel and frequency. Then we come to an if statement that checks the transmit variable. If transmit is true, we call TX. Otherwise, we call RX. Then we come to the channel switching code. We read the channel changing switches and the latch states for each to determine if we change the channel or not. Next we have our loopback code for the channel variable. If it's above 40 it goes to 1. Below 1 it goes to 40. A short delay and loop 1 is finished. Now we come to the draw logo function. We clear the display buffer, draw the bitmap in the center of the display buffer, and move the buffer to the display. Next we come to display channel and frequency function. This function takes the channel number as an argument. We create a string to hold the human readable frequency. Then we come to the switch. The switch uses the channel number to choose the frequency for both the display stored in the string and the clock generator which is stored in the VFO frequency variable. After the switch, we come to code that formats the information to the display. I talk about this in depth in the video Raspberry Pi Pico, I2C and Arduino Part 2. Next, we come to the TX function. This function uses the SI5351 object to set the frequency of the SI5351 based on the value stored in the VFO frequency minus the TX offset value times 100 unsigned long long. We multiply by 100 because the SI5351 takes the frequency in hundreds of hertz, not hertz. 
We specified unsigned long long because it is required by the library. Finally, we come to the Rx function where we do the same as the Tx function, except we use the Rx offset frequency. In the next video, we will set up a menu to calibrate the SI5351. Set the offset frequencies and add flash storage of these values to complete our 40 channel CB radio VFO. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe.